Hey, Trevor, what are you working on? Oh, hi, Danny. Danny, I've been working on this idea to do a diorama that includes all my model cars from 1936 to 1941. And 1941 is really the last year of cars being produced in America before World War II. There were some 42s around, but they're hard to find in model kit form. So what I need to do is get some license plates for each of these cars that are from British Columbia from 1941. I don't think I've ever seen BC plates in a model kit's decal sheet, especially 1941 plates. Where are you going to find those? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Danny. I've discovered a new way to make license plates that are authentic British Columbia 1941 license plates that we can just print off on our computer, cut out and put on any of these license plate frames of any of these kits to make them all universal. So let's go down to the bench and see what kind of tools we need, and then we can go up to the computer room. So what you're going to need is a working computer with access to the web, open office writer or Microsoft Word, printer and paper and ink, a cutting board, uh, a ruler, I've got two different kinds, a short one for measuring and a longer one for actually cutting, and then a hobby knife with a number 11 blade, the computer snipping tool, which we'll take a look at in a minute, and one of the license plate frames. Now what I've noticed is that each of these license plate frames are different size according to what car you're using. So this is a sprue from the 41 Plymouth from AMT. And we can just take a quick measurement here and then note it down. So in millimeters we've got about 1.3 millimeters long by, uh, what is this, about six millimeters tall. So keep that in mind, about 1.2, 1.3 millimeters by six millimeters tall. Here we are in the computer room and I'm pointing the camera at the screen because I don't have that nice screen and screen feature, which would have been really good because it would make it look better. However, what I wanted to show you here is before we begin making a license plate, this is a website that's all about British Columbia license plates as it says a history of British Columbia license plates. This I found really invaluable and now I don't know how many of these kind of websites are out there for the different uh, US states, provinces of BC or Canada, I mean, and um, like Europe countries and whatnot. But this one is really neat because if you look here, it's got this whole history of British Columbia and a book you can get tales from the back bumper. And uh, there it is there, bcpl8plates.ca. Now, on the side here where my mouse is, right there, it says uh, Passenger, Antique, Apex, BC Parks, blah, blah, blah. And if you notice here, as you scroll through it, it actually changes the license plate and the sticker and all that sort of thing. So really kind of cool. If you click on Passenger Cars, this is what we're looking for. So here we can see all the different types of BC plates like 1913, 14, 15, all of that. Now here's where I need to be, 1940 to 1948. So if we click on there, as you can see here, each of the license plates, depending on the year, is a different color. So 1940 was black with yellow numbers. Then as we scroll down, you see 1941 is white with blue numbers. And the year is in the corner here. Now these are all examples from, you know, different stages of kind of decay of license plates. So there's really clean and then it kind of goes down. This one's the most rusty. You could actually take these rusty ones and clip them out if you wanted that kind of effect on your model. Uh, it all depends. See here's 42 and it's white with blue now. So that's sort of one of the things they did. And they did this prior to 1970. In 1970 they started to use the same color plate and that's when they applied the little sticker things. But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So we'll go back to 1941. Now these are all the passenger plates, and what's interesting is over in this corner here, it tells you what these prefix letters are. So this A means that this is a Vancouver Island license plate from 41. The B means it's from Vancouver. There was either the one or two digit style, so here it's just B and then a dash, and then this one's B1 with a dash. And then the license plates up top here don't have any letters corresponding to anything. That doesn't really matter. I think some of these plates were issued in certain locations, but the majority would be, you know, province-wide sort of thing. Um, and then they also tell you how many of the plates they had. So initial series was 1 to 9,000. 
or 91,000 different plates, and there was 105,041 cars, or 410, pardon me, registered with an overrun of 16,000 plates issued in pairs. So there's a lot of uh, <laughs> manufactured at Ocala Prison. <laughs> so there's a lot of details on here that are really unique and interesting to the plates. See, they even have the numbers and the stats over here. Uh, some of the stories regarding the plates. Uh, F prefix, it was issued to passenger vehicles in New Westminster between 40 and 47. You know, all this kind of neat stuff. So this is a really invaluable website to go to, the British Columbia license plates. And another cool thing about this is if you don't want passenger cars, you can also go down to commercial trucks and it does much the same thing. So where's right here? So we just go down. This starts in 1936. See, there's a red frame here that is for the uh, national parks. So really cool stuff. Um, get a good history on this website. And hopefully there's something like this for like Connecticut or New Hampshire or, you know, Manitoba or something like that. But like I say, again, so the different prefixes like CA, if you go over on this side here, you can see that that was a Victoria plate. Numbers one to CA999. So again, really great to get your uh, research done beforehand. And one other thing that is of note, a lot of the 1941, well, any car for that matter, when the new cars come out, it was usually in September. So that would mean that if you had a 1942 Dodge, you could actually have a car with a, 1940, a 1942 car with a 1941 license plate on it because you still had September, October, November, December. So basically three to four months where you could have a 1941 plate on a 1942 car. Same with like a 1940 plate on a 30 or on a 41, pardon me, a 1954 plate on a 55 Chevy, that sort of thing. Because again, it was all like based on that year. So now I'm going to take you to a website where we can actually build our own 1941 BC license plate. So now I've switched us over to this website. It's called licenseplates.tv. And this one has license plates from all over the world. And if you uh, dig through, you can find different areas. So here we have British Columbia. Now, this is a website where you can build authentic full-size license plates, but you can also design them in here, which is really cool. So there you got 1937, 1938, 39, 40, and here's what we want, 1941. So you click on the icon or the license plate, and there it puts you in here. So what we have here is their you know, existing plate that they were showing you at the front. And then down here is a blank. Now, uh, let's go in here and I'll show you on the blank. So you could type in, uh, let's say this is car license plate number 573. So you just type that in and there it goes. Or if you wanted it to be like uh, B1, for example, and then dash 573, there you got it. So let's say you want to take one of these license plates and now what we're going to do is we're going to just go down here. I'm running Windows 7 still. <laughs> so here's our snipping tool. So what I can do is take this right tight up to that frame and just select this license plate out. Just do the top one here. So now that is into our snipping tool. So you go File, Save As wherever, uh, so we, I want to put it on my hard drive, go into uh, the model car garage. And then what I'm going to do is go down here. So I've already got this one. I did it before. See, 2534. So if I go, I'll just overwrite it. So I'll go save. Yes, I want to replace that. So there it is. Okay, so now that's as simple as what that is. So we can turn this off, our snipping tool. So basically what you do is you just snip these out. Okay, so now we'll go to the next step. Here I've opened up Open Office Writer, which is what I have. This is my uh, word processing program. And what I found is that actually, if you use a word processor instead of paint or something, you actually get a sharper image in here with these plates. So that's what I've done. Now, as you can see, I've copied a lot of these little plates and reduced the size. 
These ones are Alberta ones from 1959, same as these. These ones are scaled at different sizes, same as like down the split here. So you see seven, 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 seven. So that's for the front. Um, so these ones I scaled up for that Plymouth license plate frame. These ones are for the 40 Ford from AMT. Sometimes you'll find different sizes. So you almost have to scale these license plates for uh, each of the frames. You can't really depend on one size fits all because I found that uh, something like the 65 Pontiac from AMT, these plates will fit into the Chevy frames, but they won't fit in the Pontiac one, you know, because they're too small. They look like they're out of scale, <laughs> you know, this sort of thing. So you really have to figure it out. So what we, what we can do here is I'll add in a plate. So if I go insert picture, from file. So I want to go down here again. Uh, let's see. So there's all the different plates. So let's, uh, I've already done this one, but let's grab this one. I'm going to open it up. There, you can see it's really big. So what we want to do now is uh, we want to go, oh, click on the picture and you go down to picture. Now here it says width and you notice it's in centimeters. So millimeters are, of course, a division of centimeters. So if I go, it was 1.13 and then the height is 0.6 because it was 60 millimeter, or yeah, six millimeters by th um, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so there it goes. So now you can see that it's reduced itself. And if I can grab it and move it, Yep, there we go. So I'm going to put it down here into a neutral spot. Boom. And there's our plate. Now with white plates, you want to make sure that you snip around that frame so that you can find it when you print this thing out. But basically, that's really what you're doing. You're just copying off one thing and rescaling it. Now, this website does have a lot of uh, license plates that you can build, but you will notice that sometimes there are missing years. So this one is 1948 and then the next one is 55. So we're missing 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, and 54. So you may ask yourself, okay, well, where am I going to find those, right? So what you can do is you can also go to this website here, Acme Licenses. And this website, you can make up your plates. However, like for Alberta, they only have 1930, 1984, and the Olympics. So I do prefer to use the other one. So there's a... 1930. Um, and again, you just snip this out with a snipping tool, put it into the word processor and resize it. So this is another place you can go to, but again, it's very limited in the web or the plate design. Unlike, uh, whoops, unlike license plates dot TV, but even then they don't have everything. So what do you do? You can easily Google plates. So here is 1941 for Alberta. Um, what you want to do with these is you want to find somebody that uh, took a picture of the license plate and scanned it in here and put it up for an image. You want to find a plate that's like this one here, which is basically flat on the scanner screen or whatever, however they used it. You don't want one that is like, uh, let's find one <laughs> that's peaked. You know what I mean? Like where they've kind of photographed it at an angle or something. Um, oh, here's one of those park ones. <clears throat> Let's see, where is one? Yeah, like, like this one up here. You know, you're going to have a hard time cutting this out and getting it square onto a car. Same as this. This is very cone-shaped or um, rhombus, whatever the, <laughs> the geometric shape is. I should look that up. Um, you wouldn't want to snip that out and glue it on. Same with this one because it's going in this way. You want one that's dead flat like this, as close as you can get it. And like I said, sometimes snipping out these rusty license plates could add a bit of character to your model as well. Uh, there, this is a neat one. It's got the Willys Motors incorporated on top from Minneapolis. The only problem again is you're not going to get a straight cut out of that with a snipping tool. It's going to be very distorted. So that's what you really want is plates that are not distorted. I'm going to show you what a license plate from the website looks like that I made a copy of. This is the top one, this uh, 
XC694. This is one I got off the website and we'll just take a look at what that that looks like. So here it comes. This is a real world license plate and as you can see up here in the corner you've got rust and a couple of little specks where the paint is chipping off on it. That's a real real car license plate that I got off the web and that's exactly how you want it so it's nice and perfect. This thing will fit in a frame nicely. So I'm just going to delete this because I already have it. That's up there. So what I did is reduce all these down, all these different plates, all these different years and everything. But I've got my 1941s right in the center here. Some of these like 59, 67, 68, whatever it is, I can't remember. Uh, some of the really interesting plates of this time period are 1958, 1961 and 1962. Because 1958 is gold with green letters. This one is pink with red letters, and this one is red with pink letters. And I don't know how the police would ever have seen these things from a distance, because you really can't read them. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, something that's interesting. So what I would do here is I would get some paper, uh, preferably the thick cardstock. And I've seen some people use photo paper, which might even be better because it gives you a slick finish. You just go down to print. And then the print menu comes up, select your printer, and then punch the print button, and all this will print out on paper. So we'll go down to the bench and we'll see what that looks like. So here I have the license plates that I printed out originally. This is just from the test demo, and the only reason I'm showing these is because I actually had some pretty good ink in the printer at the time, but I did start to run out. And uh, here's what it looks like with the ink running out. <laughs> so. It's not quite the nicest, but it is still pretty good up along the top here. These are all those Alberta plates that I printed out. And now what I would do is uh, take this piece of paper and move it over here for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to take my hobby knife and of course take that off. Now on the one side these are the 1.13 millimeter and these ones are 1.12 by 5.5. These are by 0.6. And uh, one thing that I, I did note about this, these are the lowest number plates for that year, so like seven. I think number four is the lowest that they actually have found. And then of course these move up a little bit. And then these are the high number plates. And then uh, commercial plates with the C's and the C7s. Those are of course different regions in BC. And then we have National Defense, ND. So these would sort of be like home defense military stuff, which is 1941, of course. And then we've got Medical Doctor, PN374. Now, the medical doctors used to have license plates like this, but they got rid of them later on because people were figuring out that medical doctors were carrying like certain drugs in the cars. So uh, there'd be a lot of break and enters from desperate people looking for, I guess, the next hit or whatever. So they got rid of the PN license plate pretty much after the war. And then PW is public works. So those would be like uh, municipal vehicles and that sort of thing. Now what you want to do, of course, is take your ruler. We're just going to move this around a little bit. There's that 2584 one again. 2534. One thing that is nice about that program is it does have the correct font for that year. So I'll just take my ruler, my straight edge, line it up under the bottom of the license plate and then cut my knife through it. This is a little bit of a cardstock paper that I'm using. It's a little thicker. I hope I'm getting this okay. I can't really see. Uh, I'm probably making a debacle of this thing. Anyway, uh, here we go. So this is basically all I'm doing. I think I'm cutting it crooked. Okay, so there's my license plate out. Doop. And I'll just move this out of the way. And now I can bring my license plate frame back in. This is from the 41 Plymouth. So let's just grab that. Now, what I would do is put a little bit of crazy glue on the back here. I forgot to mention that in the tools you need. And then I would carefully glue it onto that frame. Now you notice that the frame is actually a little bit wider than the license plate. Uh, now you could do one of two things. You could, I could glue this on and then cut the frame a little narrower on each side. 
or I could just try to take the license plate and maybe go 1.14 millimeters and hope that it spreads it out a little longer. But I don't know. I mean, the other thing to do is paint that black and then glue the plate on. So it does look like the plate is actually attached to the frame. But as you can see, it's not too distant off the edges. So that's always good. Hey Danny, check this out. This is a 1964 AMT Chevy Impala kit that I built when I was about, uh, maybe about 16 or something like that. And my dad had BC license plates hanging up in the garage. So I took this 1967 plate because I really liked it. Because I do believe our license plates at the time are white and blue. So I wanted one that was unique. This one is white and red. And I hand painted these letters in and tried to paint in the little British Columbia here, but I couldn't really uh, write that tiny. So I just sort of made a mook on it. And this is what the license plate looks like that I've just printed off. And I made a duplicate of it with the proper BC thing. So you can see quite the difference. So if I just put it on there, I can glue it in place and it would look like an authentic car from British Columbia from 1967. Well, that's really cool, Trevor. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and that you find it helpful in designing and creating your own license plates for whatever year that you choose. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family if you found it helpful. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make new videos, you're the first one to see it. Join us on our Patreon page or even join us on this channel to show your support. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.